Hello, my fellow Cyber Hornets, Jonathan Levy here. And in this video, I'm going to be reviewing and comparing the Keystone Tablet versus the Keystone Tablet Plus. <laughs> Some of you may have seen similar products or even seen these products presented with another brand name under the Kobo brand. But today I have received these wonderful little goodies from Keystone and they have kindly furnished them to me so I can demonstrate and show you the differences. Now, if you are considering doing a cold backup on steel, Overall, I highly, highly recommend it. We all know the importance of cold storage, and hopefully if you've gotten this far into putting your backups into steel or titanium, you understand the importance not only of cold storage, but also of creating a backup to your hardware wallet. You know, these hardware devices are wonderful, they're fantastic, but they are not flame-proof and they do not survive boating accidents. They're not waterproof either. So today I'm gonna to talk about some of the differences between these two products, what makes them different, what makes one better than the other, and which one is the right one for you. I'm also going to show you how they work in case this is the first time you have encountered one of these devices. You probably have a lot of questions like, how am I supposed to fit 24 words onto this device? what happens if it gets opened, all of those different things. So let's go ahead and dive in and I will show you how these devices work and which one is right for you. All right, so here we have the Keystone Tablet Plus and the Keystone Tablet. Immediately, you'll notice that in the box, they give you really everything you need, including four of the plates with all the different letters that you would possibly need. I'm not sure why they're numbered, each one, but just so you know that they are numbered, they give you a screwdriver, which I thought was really cute, and they also give you additional screws in case you lose them, which will be really important for the Keystone Plus because, as you'll see, it has 13 screws inside of it. Additionally, I love that they give you a quick explanation. Why only four letters? I know this is something that so many people ask when they look at the inside of these devices, how am I ever going to fit an entire word like the word shadow inside this plate? And the answer is right here. They tell you and they give you a website URL. Why only four letters? Because the universal standard of seed words recovery phrases, misspelling, is defined in Bitcoin improvement protocol 39, there's a word list and the first four letters are unique to each word. I thought that was really cool, a great way to explain to people. They then give you a nice little instruction card in English and in Chinese that will explain to you exactly how things work and what you need to do. Now, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and put the original Keystone tablet aside. Ah, and also, I forgot to mention, they give you these awesome tamper-proof stickers so that you know if anyone has opened your backup which I think is really, really awesome because it's great to have cold storage, but if someone else takes over your keys, well, you are in trouble unless, of course, you are like myself and many other hardcore cyber hornets who actually use multi-signature or Shamir backup, which Keystone does support Shamir backup with their device, the Keystone Pro. So, Take note of that, that if you are going to be storing very, very large amounts, you might want to get three to five of these devices so that any one backup is not enough to take over your Bitcoin. One quick thing that I do want to point out that was a little less than intuitive to me is that the numbering does not go one, two, three, and down, but actually goes one, two, three, four, five, six. You want to pay special attention to that before you put all the letters in. I got about halfway done and then realized, wait a minute, where is the numbering? and then had to reposition my letters. So a little less intuitive. I tend to think it would have made more sense to go down this way. It doesn't ultimately matter in the end because there is nice numbering here. Uh, you may need to remember that in the event that this goes through a fire, but you could quickly look up online. I'm not sure if these numbers would survive a volcano, 
but uh, you would nonetheless still have the lettering. So just pay attention to that. And again, make sure that you follow along with the correct order of the numbers. If you put one word out of order, you are completely out of luck and will never be able to restore your backup. So pay special attention to those numbers as you are putting in the letters. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this to use by go ahead and taking it apart. Again, one of the things you're going to notice, the big, big difference here between the Keystone and the Keystone Plus is uh, if you've seen any of the online tests where people have stress test these, crushed them, put them under fire, uh, blowtorch them, sometimes what can happen if you don't have individual slots for each and every one of the letters is some of the letters can fall out rearranging the order of the letters, which could theoretically and in real practice cause catastrophic data loss. So Keystone have responded to this with the Keystone Plus, which now creates an individual slot for each and every one of the letters. And it has 13 screws so that the middle, if under fire, cannot warp and allow some of the letters to slide out once again all you need to do is lose one word here and you are completely, well, let's just say screwed. So in the Keystone Plus, it's quite a bit of work to take apart, but you have 13 screws to ensure that there is continuous pressure across the entire plate so that none of these letters can come out. I'm gonna go ahead and start out with the Keystone Plus and I will go ahead and create a nice little montage here so that you don't have to suffer through me unscrewing each and every one of these screws. Right, fantastic. That was quick, wasn't it? So we now have the Keystone Plus open, at least on one half, and you can see you can slide back to reveal the plate, which will accept all of your letters. Now, a couple of important things to note about these letters. In addition to giving you four plates, I've now figured out why these plates are ordered, and it is because they are not A to Z, but rather A to E, F to L, M to R and S to Y, or Z rather. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that what they've done here is they've actually proportionally given you more of the letters that would appear in the BIP39 protocol. S is always a very popular letter in the English alphabet. And so you have a ton of S's. You have a ton of T's, a ton of U's, and you have not so many Z's, which is a really smart way to ensure that you don't get stuck with not enough letters. Additionally, they note on the card that B and Q are interchangeable. D and P are interchangeable. The font is done in such a way that it will look the same no matter which one it is, as well as W and M seem to be interchangeable, and on and on. So let's go ahead and start by placing in our first letter. Now, I am not going to do the entirety in front of you all. One, because I am going to put in a real seed here, uh, although it is multi-signature, so, you know, very secure, even if someone does manage to get one of these keys. However, it's just bad security practice. So my first word is going to be voting, and all I would need to do is place in the V tile, V, and an O tile, I love the way that they've done this with sticky backing. So it's quite easy to just pull them up and keep everything else in place. Really, really smart. One other difference that I unfortunately only realized after painstakingly peeling out uh, 100 plus letters is that the difference between the Keystone Plus and the the tablet, the regular tablet, is that the letters are already fully cut out on the plus and they are held in place by a backing, meaning you don't have to break them off one by one by one, which as you can see has 
kind of destroyed my fingernails and has taken me a ton of time to do. So another uh, convenience and ease of use benefit for the Tablet Plus is it's a lot easier to get these letters out. So I've got V, I've got O, I've got T, and since it's voting and not vote, we will find an I. It definitely makes sense to keep these in alphabetical order on your workspace as well. We have tons of I's for some strange reason. And now we have voti, which is enough for me to be able to restore because any app that I type this in will automatically correct to voting since it is the only series of words in the BIP39 protocol which has V-O-T-I in the beginning. So now I would just go ahead and continue adding all of these, not only the first 12 words, but also going to the second panel and adding the additional 24 words, noting, of course, that there are some three-letter words in the protocol. I believe cry is one of them. And if that is the case, I would just take one that I have extras of, and I would put the back of one of these letters to indicate that it is only three letters. You don't want to leave extra space, especially if you are using the Keystone tablet and not the Keystone Plus. Having extra space is just inviting trouble. Once I've gone ahead and done that, I would just slide this cover back, close it up, work on the other side, and that's pretty much it. I would then go ahead and put one of these lovely tamper-proof stickers on the device to let me know if anyone ever decides to open it without my authorization. Note that I have two of these in case I ever need to back up my own wallet and use that backup so that I still have a tamper-proof sticker. Lovely attention to detail from the Keystone team. And I just love the fit and finish of this product. Totally incredible. I really cannot overestimate or overstate how heavy this was. I mean, when the package arrived and I was expecting just the Keystone Pro, the first thing I said to the mailroom lady was, whoa, what did they send me? A bundle of rocks. Each one of these is incredibly heavy. I might even take some time later to measure them. But I mean, we're talking hundreds of grams for each one of these devices. Really, really sturdy, and I have to say, I feel like these would survive a volcanic, uh, a, a dunk in a volcanic Bitcoin mine. So really, really cool. All right, so moving on. One of the first things you will notice, there are only 12 words in the sleeve until you turn it over, and you then have 24 words, which is more than enough for any type of wallet backup, whether you have a 12-word seed, I hope you do not, or a 24-word seed in BIP39. This will work for multi-signature, and to the best of my understanding, if you are using a Shamir backup, you actually only have 20 words. And there you have it. We are now finished with the Keystone Plus. And I just realized, I was wondering to myself what these holes were for. I realized that they are actually for a padlock, although of course locks really only give you the illusion of security. They're a minor inconvenience. Uh, but with the Keystone Plus, one of the benefits is you can fit a full-sized standard padlock or combination lock in here, whereas with the regular Keystone, you'll notice the holes are a lot smaller, so you're going to need a smaller lock. Just a tiny little thing you might want to consider. Um, I'm not sure that I would trust a lock with it. I would probably still put it in a safe, but it is one additional step to keep people from exposing your private keys. And of course, once you lock it up, you can put the sticker on and you would know if someone was able to open it. All right, switching over to the standard Keystone tablet, I wanna point out that uh, it really is it seems like such a small thing having a slot for each one of the letters, but it really is a whole lot less comfortable because as you're putting stuff in, you have to kind of push it in and what'll happen is a lot of times it will flip over and they'll pile up on top of each other. It can really get uh, pretty annoying to try and line them up as opposed to having a slot for each one that you need to just simply pop in. You can see 
it's kind of a pain to slide them in and I haven't even tried to close it. So that's a little bit annoying. And I wanna point out that the order here is different. So it doesn't go like this, but rather like this. Uh, and you do need to pay attention to the order of the letters as you are assembling it. So there you have it. That is my review and overview of the Keystone Tablet Plus and the Keystone Tablet. I have to say for the small difference in price, I would definitely go with the Keystone Plus. I have to say, I really like the design. It feels nicer in the hands. It doesn't make this awful, awful sound when you open it, which I know you're hopefully only going to ever open it to program it and never hopefully have to open it a second time to check your key. But I also really love the fact that I can sleep easier knowing that no matter what happens, there's never going to be a situation of catastrophic data loss. This thing can be driven over by a Mack truck. It could probably survive an atomic blast, and I know that none of the letters are going to fall out. So I highly encourage you to check out the links below if you are interested in picking up a Keystone tablet or any of the Keystone products. And please make sure to smash that subscribe button because I'm gonna be putting out so much more content on Bitcoin and on how you can protect yourself and get more and more involved in this incredible revolution that we are all privileged to be living through. Thanks for watching. Take care.